So guys, today I got for you a part two of my best of episode dedicated to the note of violets in perfumes that I personally adore and can't get enough of. That's why I've already put together a top list of violet fragrances for you before, but since I have so many new perfumes with this note in my collection, I decided to share them with you. And let's face it, it's not the most popular note these days because it is considered a bit old-fashioned and if you're struggling finding a great fragrance with it, then definitely keep on watching to find out more check out the description box for more health information and please give this video a huge thumbs up as well as feel free to subscribe and once you're done with that we can get started so hello and welcome everyone to today's part two of the best of episode dedicated note of violets and perfumes and we are going to be focusing on the floral aspect of this note you know there are also violet leaves but they are rather green so maybe i should film a part three let me know and also if you have a favorite fragrance with this note please comment it down below i have already shared with you some other the favorites uh, in the past and definitely check out that video but for today's one I picked some really floral powdery beautiful violet fragrances and the scent of this flower is actually quite faint but I love it in perfumes not only because it provides this nice powdery texture but also because it is very versatile and you can really push and pull on it creating very different scent profiles but I was really inspired for creating this video because of my most favorite perfume at the moment moment that is my new signature scent called Mellow by Sora Dora that smells super fun it has some raspberry in the top so the opening is quite fruity but also tingly because the berry is a little bit edgy in there with pink pepper and also sugary vanilla it is a little bit metallic but I like how violet mixed with some almond and heliotro powder has this beautiful classy dry down that actually reminded me of the iconic violet perfume from Guerlain called Insolence and uh, I used to dislike this fragrance because it was a little bit too old-fashioned to me or better to say mature and now I'm so disappointed that I didn't get it I wish I did but the current formulations are very watered down so I decided to pick a dupe of it instead which is by the brand Fleur and the performance of it is really poor but I like that it smells of an OG formulation being that muted musky fragrance it is very light and actually lovely to start the day with and I use it as the layering base for some other fragrances to apply on top of it like Mellow which is stronger with great performance and it reminds me of Insolence but with something new and exciting to it so highly recommend you check it out just in case you love Insolence and you would like to smell of it but also something else it's like Insolence in a niche style with addition of some fun notes and I also have a discount for you so make sure to take advantage of it but on that note let's move on to some other fragrances that are kind of in this similar style which is New York 50 by 4,160 Tuesdays and it's funny that in the previous episode I mentioned another fragrance from this brand because Sarah is liking this note and that's why I really like this brand but this fragrance I purchased specifically to wear at work uh, in the past I used to work in the language school and I wanted to smell very mass appealing but at the same time unique and this is like your violet candy because we have some raspberry cotton candy in here and with rose with violet uh, and vanilla it smells really Swedish kind of in a candy way and it is really deep and super delicious so absolutely love this fragrance and uh, it is something very very attractive to you so in case you want compliments I used to get so many comments on this fragrance and it is really cool definitely not as musky as insolence but still with that raspberry violet um, combination it is something in that style just as Juliet has a guns lipstick fever so so this is kind of like a lipsticky perfume but um, it is slightly sourish which is interesting in here we also have raspberry with violet but this time also iris and it has almost like a waxy texture which is cool I like fragrances in this style but in fact it is not too feminine as you might think because of the name or you know the idea of uh, the lipstick scent in here we also have patchouli and cedarwood and they are prominent not in the way you can smell them separately but there is this 
this depth and almost darkness to the fragrance. So it is violety, but patchouli makes it smell really rich and expensive. And just in case you're interested in this brand, you can get it at So Avant Garde and feel free to use my discount. But this is definitely a very modern and almost dark take on the note of violet. Something else that is definitely in this cosmetic style, dressing room, getting ready, applying makeup is perfume by Anatole Laverton. And I have it in a travel size format called Incarnata. Oh my god, this is the most glamorous fragrance out there. It starts off with a raspberry and violet and it smells of powder, it smells of lipstick, it smells of uh, luxurious clothing. There are so many powdery notes in here and orris root with amber, with suede. They bring in this just not even any malic, but just very sexy and grown up energy to this fragrance that you need to have in your collection for special occasions. If you're going out and it's a glamorous, posh event, this fragrance would be great. It's like a very evening appropriate perfume, but in case you are in the mood for something brighter, lighter for the summertime, this is the new discovery for me I made at Exxon's, which is called Time Lapse. And oh my god, this is such a fun brand that is called Picture Parfum and I love the cap, I love the design, I love everything about it, but this fragrance offers us almost like a green, sunny, solar, very sensual take on the note of violet. And it is not about violet leaves, it's still about the flowers. They are actually mixed with some violet flowers, musk, but it smells of green leaves. Not sappy, not edgy. It smells even of something lotion in a way. So it's a very summery perfume and it is quite long lasting. I like the big projection of it. It's not a um, quiet perfume. And it is absolutely gorgeous. So it is super unisex. Actually, violet in there is not very prominent, but it is there and it just brings in this very uh, delicate softness to the fragrance that might be a little bit too sharp without it. So with that being said, now let's talk about my um, new purchase, 59 Cheriosa from Sol de Janeiro. Oh my God. I just love to go happy uh, and heavy <laughs> on it when I'm getting ready in the bathroom, applying, applying makeup or, you know, doing my uh, skincare routine. I love this perfume. I fell in love with it at first sniff. I don't know why it reminds me of Guidance by Amouage, don't ask me, but it's like this sugary violet, almost like Parma violet with extremely creamy sandalwood. Sandalwood in here, oh my god, I wish it lasted longer because it's still like, you know, a perfume mist, so it disappears within minutes, but for those few minutes it lasts, it's just such a marvelous feeling. It is sugary sweet, but it's not like a full-on candy gourmand fragrance. This sweetness in here, it is almost blurred, and I guess that's because of the vanilla orchid note in there. I noticed that's, that this note always blurs uh, the texture, so that's very cool. But in case you wish uh, something like that in like very extreme format, I would actually recommend you my signature scent Animalik from Beredo that I also fell in love with at first sniff, but of course this is like a full-on perfume that is long-lasting guys and it is so stunning being like a violet fragrance mixed with mimosa it is powdery but in a very delicately animalic way because in the dry down we have the note of sweet with tobacco and amber in there and they are also prominent and i absolutely love how they are mixed with tender violet so it is powdery slightly clean and at the same time very sexy and i love to wear this perfume because it's extremely cozy to me personally it just makes me feel really good wearing it and uh, yeah, it's super satisfying. But in case you want something with the, like uh, a violet that would be woodsy and um, you know um, fresh, uh, then I would recommend you 1015 by Rome 1015. So this is your woody violet, and that's great about this note um, that you can really push and pull it in many different directions. You can make it smell green, you can make it smell sweet, floral or woody like it is in here. Smelling almost of pencil shaving, smelling of sandalwood. This violet is um, very textural in a woody way, so it's very lovely if you're outside and maybe you are going for a walk or something like that. It's like a very peaceful type of a fragrance that is on the woody side and violet in here is mixed with a saffron and iris, so some 
something gently uh, spicy is going on in here and I would say this is rather like a masculine type of fragrance and something so unisex with violet that is so abstract it's even hard to define it in the perfume herring from Seven Gates is like your fantasy violet it's not really there but when you know that it features this note then it makes sense because it's like your molecular dusty type of musky violet coming from um, another space you know so if you like maybe more rooty and woody fragrances and you like them being dusty not necessarily obviously powdery and the violet in there acts like a blender of all those notes i would say it's a very abstract and interesting perfume to figure out and a fresh violet that is very aromatic is something new in my collection called lilac wine from art meets art and this is so cool because it's almost like a classy violet smelling of lavender seed and uh, musk but in there we have the note of cognac and it's like clean violet actually violet in here is a support you know there is even plum that goes well with cognac it's not too boozy I don't know how to describe it but it's just such an uplifting scent it's very purplish when you smell it you're like okay I get the lavender I get like that plummy cognac and of course the woodsiness but violet in there somewhere in the background is doing its thing and it's just such a beautiful I would say formal perfume that you can even wear to work or something because it's very inoffensive on the cool side however if you are in the mood for a gourmand violet and I'm not talking about sweet violet I'm talking about edible type of violet this is the new release from um, Hardin Le Retro that is called Violet Q that I went to the presentation of uh, in Milano and you guys this is not Violet you know it because it smells of uh, an English garden right where you have your violets growing and you're enjoying the most exquisite dish of curry so you know Indian culture is big in uh, England and it's just like it smells classy it smells very traditional but then that cumin note brings in something so unexpectedly spicy smelling of curry it's a very interesting and I believe natural violet perfume that is spicy and it's definitely not a common thing for a violet perfume being spicy they are often very like powdery and floral or even green but spicy violet is a unique thing that's why I wanted to put it on your radar but last hour not least is a very beautiful and you know this makeup cosmetic type of violet that I have in an oil format from the brand perfume oil expression that is called uh, uh, lipstick uh, rose uh, no, lipstick shades it is inspired by lipstick rose from Frederick Mal and it's more like a feminine perfume that starts off with violet leaf and grapefruit so it is mouth watering but then you know because of the lilies and violets it turns into this beautiful very gentle almost fragile spring floral fragrance in the dry down you've got your vanilla sandalwood and musk and it's just a beautiful fragrance if you want to smell feminine and powery perfumes are your favorite. I know that uh, they also have a dupe for Mason uh, Corrigion's uh, Oud Setting Mood if I'm not wrong and there is Violet too but uh, that's definitely something different that is also very unisex but Violet is definitely the note that is underrated and I absolutely love it and recommend you to check out so in case you've been looking for some Violet recommendations I hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a huge thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well as drop me a comment down below sharing your favorite violet fragrance with me and don't forget to follow me on my social media as well as shop perfumes with my discounts and the final violet fragrance i want to mention today is definitely for the violet lovers who can't get enough of this note it is by maison violet called popo de tom and it is that beautiful a little bit nostalgic violet that is so big and bold in here mixed with the rose and peachiness it is most boudoir makeup style of perfume that smells of lipstick that smells of powder that smell of cream that smells uh, of you know queens and um, princesses getting ready for the ball or something and it is strong you guys anytime I'm not getting enough of violet I just reach out for this fragrance that you can actually 
check out from their website and feel free to use my discount to save a little bit and you will be really impressed with this fragrance so yeah it's one of my og favorites and i always recommend it even like as, as a safe blind buy because it's very easy to reach for it and you will smell amazing with it and also feel yourself really good with it all the health information is down below and thank you so much for watching this episode let me know if you're interested in a part three. Oh my god and we'll see each other next one really soon bye guys